So hello everyone. Uh, since it's one o'clock, we're going to start slowly by presenting ourselves and introducing ourselves. So welcome to the financial education program presentation of today. First of all, we're going to introduce ourselves. So I'm Vanessa Boilly. I'm a pedagogical consultant for the Equipe Shock First Nations and Inuit. Today, I have my team partner with me, Andy. I'm not seeing you on screen, but I'm sure if you talk, you're going to appear. Hi, everybody. I'm Andy Scheid. I'm a pet consultant as well. The same team as uh, Vanessa, uh, Likip Shuk, Pedagogical First Nations and Inuit. And my name is Julie Rabitai. I am from Likip Shuk Pedagogical. Uh, I work in the languages and social science uh, dossiers. Uh, so today's norms and objectives, we're going to go over them, but I want to say that if you attended the history workshop in December, it was actually very similar. So if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat section and they will be monitored by <laughs> myself. So I'm going to be the chat hostess today. <laughs> so if you have any questions all along, just type them in. I'm going to make sure that Andy and Julie can address them. But if your questions are ministry related, uh, we will ask you to keep them for the end of the presentation. There will be a third section in the presentation where you can ask your question to Mrs. Giroir and this is uh, Mr. Mello, sorry. So for the objectives, what we want, really want to make clear is that we are not doing a ministry presentation. We are here working on our Equip Shock mandate. So we have adapted the ministry presentation of the financial education program of study that was given in October for the Anglophone and the First Nation and Inuit networks. So we really want to make this clear. So we are just adapting and giving you the information. This is an informative session, but we have two main goals. So today we wanna to help achieve a shared comprehension of the program, of course. And also, and I think this is gonna be uh, very interesting for you guys, uh, we wanna make sure that we have a better comprehension of evaluation because the DD, you know, they're gonna be coming and we wanna be, be, make sure that everything has been readdressed with both of our teams. Looking at the table of contents, you're going to see that it's the same section. So part one is going to be program of study, our first goal, make sure that everyone understands this, the program very well. And then we're going to take a small health break, to make sure that everyone is ready for the second part. That's going to be maybe a bit newer for you guys. The evaluation of learning that's going to be presented by my colleague, Julie. And then there's going to be a third section where you can ask your question to the ministry representatives if you have any. If you have any questions, feel free to type in the chat. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be following the presentation with you guys. So I'm going to hand over the mic to my partner, Andy, for the Financial Education Program of Study section. Great. Right. Thanks so much, uh, Vanessa, for that great introduction. I'm uh, really happy to be here on a super deep freeze in Quebec. I'm, I'm calling from Quebec City and uh, want to welcome you all to uh, to this, hopefully you have a warm drink with you and we can get through this without uh, calling too much attention to my sore throat, which I'm trying to nurse back to health. Um, yeah, the financial education program of study. Um, it's been in since 2018. Uh, this program has been offered locally uh, with local exams. And this year, 2022, both the DED and the prototype exam are going to be released soon, and they'll be released at the same time. Uh, that's where we stand right now. So some updates uh, shortly along the way. And in the next two slides, I'd like to discuss what will be the implications of having these two new documents uh, on hand, the DED and the prototype. So let's go to the slide number six here. The DED, upon its release, the definition of the <clears throat> evaluation domain becomes a prescribed and mandatory reference for the financial education program, along with the program of study, of course. Therefore, all pre-existing and current materials must be reviewed and revised to match the standards and the requirements of this DED. And any new material created, obviously, must be done in accordance with the DED important document there, as well as the prototype on the next slide. We see that upon its release, the prototype, it can be used without modification, absolutely, by the teachers and uh, 
and, and CPs. And we could also use a prototype. It can serve as a model for production of a local exam, absolutely. But in this case, it would become the property of the institution and it would have to be cited and housed as such. So ultimately all exams would, must have to conform to the DED. I uh, should be said that uh, not all educators will choose to use the prototype as is, as long as what they do create conforms. Um, and making those changes, obviously uh, it's gonna probably involve a certain amount of work. Some teachers might have more than others, it's true. But uh, if I could speak for my colleagues at the Kupchuk, we're, we're all here to help teachers and uh, pedagogical consultants manage the transition to the, the 2022 version and uh, in, in this course. So by all means, uh, reach out to us. You know how to find us. Uh, we will have some contacts as well. Uh, or we'll have our, uh, our contact information at the end of the, the, the presentation. Don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, moving along into the next slides, I'm gonna review the program objectives, yes, uh, as well as the structure, the competencies of the pro program and the content. So let's start off with the program objectives. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the objectives are to develop critical thinking skills and managing personal finances, develop self-confidence and awareness for financial well-being, to better identify situations that require taking a position, to enable adults to rigorously consider the consequences of their choices. And lastly, the final objective is to recognize the influences that they're subject to and to consider the legal implications of the options available to them. And in our case here with the program objectives, an objective is an intention. It's a goal for the implementation of the program of study. Okay, next slide. Let's look at the structure. It's quite simple. Uh, the program is divided into two courses. They can be taken in any order and no prerequisites exist. The secondary five courses are called uh, the ECM 5105-1 and the ECM-5102-1. Uh, they both carry one credit, 25 hours each. The first is entitled Consuming Goods and Services, and the second one is Pursuing an Education and Entering the Workforce. Let's look at the subject-specific competencies next. The financial education program has only one specific competency, and that is takes a position on a financial issue. And what does it mean to take a position? Well, it involves making a choice between options. It involves justifying that position using human, documentary, and legal resources. In this case, uh, the competency is defined as, according to the ministry, a, a know-how based on the mobilization and effective use of a set of resources. Let's continue with a subject specific competency. You'll notice a, a diagram you've seen before in, in, the, uh, in the program, in the financial education program of study. Uh, what we have are core features, key feature, four key features, and each key features contains manifestations or observable evidence and they're meant to illustrate student competency. You'll notice that the competency itself is, is located in the blue bubble in the center. So it is, takes a position on a financial issue. Um, the four key features are assesses the situation, examines different options, puts his or her position in perspective and considers the legal aspects of each option. You'll notice the manifestations are located below in bullet form. For example, in the top left-hand corner, we have identi identifies his or her needs, examines his or her budget, recognizes the constraints, and lastly, considers elements of the socioeconomic context. Next slide. Let's talk a little bit about further subject-specific content. There are compulsory elements 
and they are as follows. Financial issues, concepts, knowledge related to financial issues, as well as techniques and strategies. And the latter two are embedded into each compulsory element. And as you'll soon find out, they are found in the entirety of <laughs> the student's education from year to year. Um, in the following three slides, we will explain how content is presented in short texts, which clarify the nature of the financial issues and the context in which the knowledge is acquired. So first we'll look at the three financial issues at the core of the program. And they mirror the, the title of the two courses. The first is consuming goods and services, pursuing an education and entering the workforce. Across those three, we'll have 11 concepts. They're boxed in the green. They're distributed, distributed amongst the three financial issues in a way that adult learners would most likely encounter them in daily life. So in the first issue, you'll be dealing with teaching and evaluating concepts such as consumption, debt, purchasing power, and savings. And in pursuing an education in the, the, probably the first half of the second course, you'll be dealing with financing, qualifications, and training. And entering the workforce, well, employment, nature of employment, remuneration, and taxation issues. And you'll, you'll notice that these concepts are distributed in a kind of a logical way, uh, but overlaps do exist. Let's take a closer look at the concepts. Um, along with the issues and concepts, the compulsory elements of the program include knowledge. And they relate to each financial issue. They are really well laid out in the documents. And here we have a uh, financial issue would be the, the consuming goods and services below the concepts, the four concepts that we just mentioned. And they're elaborated on with the knowledge. And those include advertising, budget planning, characteristics of consumption, consumer behavior, consumer credit, personal savings, rights, responsibilities, and remedies, and types of purchases. You'll notice that there's a table uh, beside to the right of the the yellow box. Uh, these are this is accompanying material in the text form. Uh, the rationale behind the presentation of the subject specific content in table and in text form is just for teachers to get a better organic view of each. It gives a more text and contextualized view of the table. Let's go to the next bank of knowledges. We have here uh, the financial issue is pursuing an education as we saw. the concepts, financing, qualifications, and training, and the knowledge, striking a balance between family, work, and school, education-related costs, financing education, internal and external resources. Those are the knowledge for the second financial issue. Next slide. We have the third financial issue, entering the workforce. The three concepts, as mentioned previously, and the new knowledge here, employment insurance, income tax, job search, remuneration, tax evasion, which I know nothing about, obviously, work-related rules. Let's continue and break down those um, into specifics, some of the, the knowledge, for example, here, what we have is uh, a breaking down of the budget planning aspect. That knowledge is broken down into specifics, such as, for example, a, a net monthly income, the fixed and variable monthly expenses, such as housing, insurance, food, recreation, and more, as well as income not consumed. And the last, grouping of the content. To analyze financial issues, all learners must use techniques and strategies in order to find information and support their position. These are five strategies suggested in the program. Interpreting a written document, interpreting an illustrated document, interpreting an audiovisual document, interpreting and creating a graph, as well as interpreting and creating a table. 
As for its strategies, there are two that we saw that are suggested, and those are using a search engine and evaluating website. So this marks the end of the review of the program's objectives and structures, the, the competencies and the content. And before I pass the baton back to Vanessa, I'd just like to go briefly into some examples, um, how, how, how teachers might set up their course content. And we put that into diagram form. You'll notice here on, on the slide that Vanessa just put up that this diagram is based on the one previously seen on page 11. Um, you'll notice that I have the, the following two slides after this one. Uh, they're regrouped by financial issue. Now, the first one is consuming goods and services. So let's get uh, some audience participation in here. Get ready. Uh, in the chat, I would like you, please, if you know, uh, two questions for you. Does someone recall what element is shown in the center bubble? I've got the purple bubble and it says, which mobile phone should I purchase? Now, what element does this, does this question represent? Vanessa, do we have something pop up yet? Oh, yes. Taking a yes. position by Emily? Absolutely. Yes, the competency, taking, taking a position on a financial issue. Well, let's look closely at the key features and manifestations as well. Top left, we have assesses the situation. What features on my phones might I need? What are my financial resources? What's my budget? Uh, should I go into debt? Is a phone a want or a need? Uh, top right, examines different options. What are the real costs of each option? What are the pros and cons of each option? Um, do I have to buy the device? Can I commit in the short, medium, or long term? Next, bottom left, we have puts their position into perspective. Am I being influenced by a trend? What choices have others made? Did someone influence my decision? <laughs> Good questions. Considers the legal aspects of each option. What guarantees are offered? What are the responsibilities of the seller or service provider? Do I have access to after sale service? Hmm. Let's take a look at the next financial issue, key question. So recalling, taking a position on a financial issue. Should I take, sorry, taking a position on, uh, in pursuing an education? Should I take vocational or technical training? Great question. So let's look at the key features. Assesses the situation. Manifestations are, what are my interests and abilities? How many years do I want to study? How would I balance my job or family with my studies? And how will I pay for my education? What kind of job do I want in the future? Well, that would lead them to examine different options. What's the educational institute? Where is the educational institution located? What are the costs involved? What are the pros and cons of each option? How much will my education cost? And what kind of education options are available? So they've got to put their position into perspective. Has someone influenced my decision? Does my choice still suit my needs? Did I make the choice to follow friends? And what about the legal aspects of each option? Am I eligible for financial aid or a scholarship? What are my loan repayments uh, responsibilities? And the last, here the financial issue is integrating the workforce and the key question, which job should I choose? For assessing the situation, I could see teachers coming up with lesson plans that would lead students into addressing various uh, manifestations. What are my interests and skills? What salary would meet my needs? How many hours can I put into a job? Will I have responsibilities? And what benefits am I looking for? Well, examine those options. How, how do salary and benefits compare? Are these jobs unionized? Do these jobs open doors for me? What are the pros and cons of each option? 
again, putting their position into perspective. What would those questions look like? Do I have friends or family members in the same field? Is this a contract or a permanent job? And of course, consider the legal aspects of each option. What are my rights and responsibilities? What are my employer's rights and responsibilities? Will I be eligible for EI? Does this job meet my pay equity? No, does this job meet pay equity standards? And does it meet health, safety, and labor standards? So a little bit of an example set uh, that I just gave you there. Um, I think now is about the time that we transition to a, a, a question period, possibly a health break after that, or, or are we doing the questions after? I think we're gonna do the question before, if, because I received no question apart from a, a single glitch with my screen. I'm sorry, sometimes there seems to be a delay between we pressing, you know, going on and you seeing what was going on on my screen. That was weird. Oh, okay. But uh, do love those reflections from Emily, those reflection questions for the competency. Yes, that's a comment, but it is true. I think if our students are able to answer these questions, they're going to be, you know, way more competent in life in general, not just this course. So I think, yes, these reflection questions, it's very interesting to see that it's really based on critical thinking, this course. Absolutely. Uh, you can open your mic too if you have a question like you since it's a question period you can type in or join us it was probably clear and which is good <laughs> well, that i guess uh no questions is good news unless i, I spoke over the head which I, i'm sure i didn't no i don't think so no. so we're gonna take a really uh, look this looks interesting i like that the students need to wait out their options based on their own needs and circumstances yes plenty of room for individuality individual oh, individualization i'm gonna say it in Absolutely. french <laughs> putting them into a position to make decisions yes and, and choices exactly and if i may add as you can see under each of the three uh, diagrams uh, these were taken from a, a presentation or prior presentation that had been done prior to the program being uh, being uh, uh, being out and this is the translation so i although greatly presented and, and, and well uh, translated, they are uh, taken from a presentation that, uh, that people did over at a colloque in 2016. We have a question from Patricia. She's asking, are we going to have a textbook for these courses? Mm -hmm. So that's a great question. I know that Julie uh, has been looking into the material like we did. Each, I would say each CSS and center have been starting to give these courses previously and there's some that are going around. You wanna go on, Julie? Well, as far as, as, as the material is concerned, um, for the history portion of this presentation, we were fortunate enough, uh, Marie-Hélène, uh, Mrs. Giroir shared with us approved material for the history program at the youth sector that could be used for history. Uh, so when it is time for our ministry questions, then maybe just uh, making sure to remind us, remind us to ask if there is a list of approved material that you could be uh, using on your end. But definitely there exist uh, docu there exist workshop workbooks, textbooks out there. Uh, and you will be also given a very, very reliable tool to evaluate uh, the material that you you yourself want to supplement or complement, and that's coming up uh, in uh, in a subsequent section. Another question: There is a document available that will show the diagrams in the slides we just looked at. It was a document that was done in French. Julie, was I wrong? Yeah. Uh, the three that the three that we just saw were from a the French presentation in October. Uh, and they also came from a, an earlier presentation. Uh, they will be available along with the rest of the slides. We will put everything into a PDF format and every uh, participant will have a copy. So you will have everything, everything there that you wanna use uh, that'll be available to you shortly along with the history uh, PDF. Both of them were gonna be sent out. And Emily also replied that there's a Padlet, a social science Padlet, um, and she shared the link. So if you want to go see, there's some resources in there for the adult education. And we're going to go on also at the end with the, 
the remaining the remaining uh, resources want to talk about. Yes. Yes, that's true. Thank you, Emily. Thanks. Any more questions? If not, anyway, there's going to be plenty of time. Oh, we have a question from Michelle. Yes. Hi. My question is, uh, I've been working with the uh, CJT or Carrefour's Ines, and they've been uh, presenting in the last couple of years the Case de Jardins uh, module with a bunch of budgeting aspects in it. I'm wondering if we'll be able to uh, adapt that or help us to use that as a resource as well. Thank you. I know what you're talking about. I've, uh, I don't know, Judy, if you want to complete after me, but I was going to say, I remember these resources. They were like very math oriented, if I remember correctly. It's been a few years that I've seen the, the material that was shared. Uh, it's very interesting, but for the evaluation part that you're going to see later, it's not based on calculus or calculating stuff in English. Like I, I remember vaguely what was doing with the Caisse des Jardins. Different banks did the program too back in the days. And what I remember with this material that it was really math oriented. So this program is more about like critical thinking. So you can like integrate in your teachings some aspect of you know maths and being able to calculate budget or whatever but at the end what we expect of the students are going to see later is really more like a reflection on all of these data so yes i can i think it will still be able to be used but maybe differently with different questions you know once they have made uh, the, the the course because if it's the same as it was like two three years ago like i remember it was a lot math oriented am i correct it's still the same um i think they updated it and like i remember one particular section where they talked about uh rules for rentals and signing agreements and what your rights are and the consumer right uh if you know if you're mischarged something uh at a store or something so i don't know if it's going to fit in with what we are are talking about and but it seemed to be less math oriented from what i remember uh, the newer version, and that was last year we did that with them. Um, and it's like 10 modules or something like that, but we didn't do all of them because they're, they are pretty in depth. Yeah. Okay. If I well, may add, yeah, uh, go ahead. Vanessa, you were right in that the material itself sounds very interesting and, and very useful in the um, teaching of the subject matter and the assessment of students' understanding of things like debt or whatever. But in the end, and we will talk about it in more uh, details shortly, uh, the evaluation is really focused on uh, critical thinking skills and not the, the operations that you are uh, supposed to, uh, to be, to understand. So they are part of what we use, but they're not the evaluation uh, target per se. But we will definitely, uh, a lot of it can still be used, and uh, that's absolutely possible. But during the course of your teaching it and not for evaluation purposes necessary. We have Emily with a question. Uh, a comment, not a, a question, actually. Um, Michelle, if you check out the Padlet um, that's, that's linked in the chat there, it's through the AGE resources site. There are like a lot of resources um, that are available in English as well as some that are in French as well. Um, but I would check out especially the ones from Learn Quebec. They are um, like youth for, for the youth sector, but a lot of the resources there are in Google Doc form. So they're editable too. Um, so you can change it up to suit your needs. Great, thank you very much. And I could have a look also at the new version of the, the material, like I've seen it two, three years ago, but if it changed a lot, maybe they really took, you know, another way of teaching with more reflective questions, like you said, so maybe it's more appropriate than I think. I would mm -hmm. need to and take Michelle, another look well, at it. If ever you need, you need us to go through things and take time to walk through all this, then we can take a look at together. No problem. We're there for you. Thank you. For that. You're welcome. So welcome back, everyone. My name is Julia Obitay. I will be covering the evaluation portion of this presentation. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I want to apologize. If the pace is a little fast, I will try to pace myself. Uh, having read and typed and made corrections throughout you know, the last few weeks on these slides makes it so that they become a little bit of a second nature and we sometimes go a little fast. So I do apologize if it is the case. 
Uh, second of all, if there are any typos that we might not have seen because, again, way too close to, uh, uh, to, to see them, uh, please uh, let me know and we will make the corrections, of course, before we send you the PDF. So I do apologize if that happens. Uh, we have done our very best for it not to happen, of course. Uh, this section is a little bit more meaty. Uh, I would say, and there may be uh, a little bit more unknowns. So I will try to take my time and cover everything. And I will probably give you a little bit of time to process uh, some more, uh, I would say, voluminous portions so that we can really take smaller bites and not, uh, not choke on all of this new subject matter. So uh, evaluating, of course, is we are doing subject-based competency. Uh, this is a program that uh, has a competency that's subject-based, of course, sorry. Uh, there is one competency. There is also just one uh, evaluation criterion. So this can seem like it's going to uh, make things easier on us, but it is quite a change. We are used to more, uh, many more competencies and dealing with more work. So. In this case, we really have one competency and one uh, evaluation criterion, and we'll try to make sure that everything is clear in between. So what is evaluation? It is still your professional judgment, of course. It's criterion based. And of course, it is meant to compare learning to the expectations that are in the program and in the, uh, the evaluation of uh, the evaluation domain. Now, the evaluation criterion for financial education will be the appropriate justification of a choice. So we're really looking at, as Andy was saying earlier in his presentation, we're really looking at uh, critical thinking skills and being able to evaluate and determine if something is good for us or not, and then be able to justify this in an appropriate fashion in a, in a I would say, a more comprehensive fashion. That's the objective. So the criterion assesses the adult's ability to formulate an explanation. And the explanation should present the advantages of the chosen option and the disadvantages of the other ones, the ones that are left behind. And all of this under the competency of taking a position on a financial issue. The sample tasks that can be used or appear in uh, different LESs, different evaluation, uh, uh, evaluations that you build, uh, there can be a number of them. You can see graphs, text, oral, a table, or any other that will uh, that are current or future, and that will be uh, that will be, I would say, appropriate in the in the setting of financial education. But for the means of the prototype and of course evaluation. Uh, the use of the table with developed answer is the one that was retained. So to continue on those sample tasks, <clears throat> the components of evaluation tasks, they can be developed answer questions, which would then evaluate the learner's ability to explain or develop their critical thinking on a topic. They can also be short answer questions and these evaluate the learner's ability to mobilize the knowledge about financial issues. And here comes the first of our mobilizing knowledge versus critical thinking and explanation. And there is, that's the distinction that is very important in the evaluation process. Many of the tasks involve a scenario and the scenario can be used to present the information that is essential to answering the question or guide the learner by providing the context to which the question refers. And as we saw in the history presentation and most of the times as the way it's presented in our, uh, you know, the ministry documents and so on, the tasks must refer to their accompanying document file. So what does the document file do exactly? What's the role of the document file? Well, they can be a little different in the developed answer questions and in the short answer question. So in the case of a developed answer question, the role of the documents is to contribute to the formulation of an explanation, which means that the documents that are in the document file must orient the learner in choosing an option 
and they, uh, they can also, sorry, orient the readers in establishing, the learners, sorry, establishing the advantages and the disadvantages of an option. In the case of short answer questions, the roles can be different, and they are, there are four different roles that these documents can play. The first one is to provide guidance. In this case, the document provides examples or data that the student must use in their uh, choice or justification of their choice. And the documents may or may not be mentioned in the question. So sometimes you're looking for them to, uh, to find an answer that may be uh, data from a table that is in the document file. So in this case, you may very well not mention in the question where exactly to find the info and other times you may direct them. So it's either or in this case. The second role is that it provides context. In this case, it's the context to which the question refers. And again, the documents may or may not be mentioned in the question, depending on what you want as an outcome. The documents can also constitute part of the question. So in this case, the documents would provide the learners with the information that you need to answer the question. And in this case, the documents are mentioned in the question. They must be mentioned so that the students and the learners know where to go to be able to find that question, that, that information. The final role that the documents can take on in short answer questions, they can constitute part of or the entire answer to the question. The documents in this case would present the learners with information to be selected as the complete answer or partial answer to the question. And of course, in this case, they are indicated in the question. So first and foremost, a disclaimer uh, that the sample questions from this, the following uh, few slides, the section from slides 29 to 32, not been validated by a committee of teachers, but they were nonetheless adapted from the Ministry, the ministry and Publication that follows. In this case, it was the info doc for the prototype from June 2018. What we are going to do, what I'm going to do with you in the following sections, and that's, that's where I'm going to try and take my, my time a little bit more and give you time to take it in a little bit more. Uh, in the following section, we will be looking at developed answer questions and their corresponding document files. Uh, in each case, you will see that a situation is presented uh, and the learner must choose an option. An option can also be chosen for them. You'll see how in one of the questions. And um, they must, however, always justify their choice according to the context that was given. Uh, for easier reference, the document file should, and I would even go to, as far as saying must be printed in a double page spread which would look more like um, a booklet a booklet format. Very important so that they have everything in front of them to be able to work. So this is an example of what a developed answer questions document file may look like. As you will see, there are three components to this one. Now, of course, we say it should be in a double spread uh, page format. It's not exactly, exactly to the millimeter uh, the, exactly the same, but it should, as you can see, it's, it's really something that you should have all in front of you. There are three portions to it. You will notice there's a scenario or a contextualized portion, which you see here appear um, highlighted in or bordered in, in purple. In there, you will find the information that pertains to the situation, the scenario that the student, that the learner will be uh, working from. The second part that will be uh, boxed in orange is document one, which in this case contains data, numbers, information regarding monthly income, monthly expenses, uh, the savings that are done monthly or that are done annually. And this is 
provided for the student. As you can see, they don't have to make the calculations. They are in the form of a table and data provided for them in their document file. The third part of it, which is on the right and will appear boxed in green, is consists of the three options that the student will have, or the learner, sorry, will have to analyze and look at in order to make the best choice possible. So in the document file, you have everything you need to know what the, the, what the scenario calls for, the elements that are important in there, the needs and the situation, the circumstances. You have the numbers and you have the options that are offered so that you can make an enlightened decision as a learner. There are, in the, for the purpose of this presentation, we are looking at three different types of developed answer question. There are going to be three samples, and I'm going to try to walk you through them uh, as not too slowly, of course, but as slowly and as clearly as I possibly can. So in this first developed answer question sample, we have a question that is worth 10 points. And the, um, the task is to choose an option and justify the choice considering the elements that are presented in the scenario. As you can see, the student will have, the learner will have to really look at everything that's in the document file and evaluate and analyze all the elements uh, so there may be a little bit more to write and a bit more to fill. And of course, hence the 10 points provided in this case. In whatever is in pink, super nice hot pink, will be the elements that are the most important on this page, which is the question that's boxed on the, on the left-hand side. The options selected that you have at the top of the uh, table, and also there is also a band, you can see a column that is in bright pink, numbered one, two, and three, which correspond to the three justifications or the three reasons for the selection of option B in this case. So we have in the document file, a scenario, a set of data, and three possible options. The question that is, that is asked is based on his needs and financial situation. Which option is best for Pierre-Luc? Justify your answer. So you will use the table to make all of that, okay? And the, the, um, and the document file where you find everything you need. So in the table, the student must indicate the option that is best suited to Pierre-Luc's needs and financial situation, indicate two advantages of this choice based on the needs and financial situation, and indicate one disadvantage of one of the two options that are rejected. As you maybe remember, in the, you had three options. So therefore, there are two that are going to be left aside. In each of the, uh, of the rows of the table, you will have to identify one of the needs, then one advantage from the selected option, in which case B, and one disadvantage from either A or C, the ones that were left aside. What you have in a little bit of a lighter shade of, uh, of gray and in italics in the chart are possible answers that are derived from the document file. And this would then determine, you would be able to determine whether the student has enough in there to properly justify the choice that was made. So uh, points are granted for the selection of proper, the right answer and for justifying it properly. That would be for the first developed answer question. The second developed answer question sample that we have for you, uh, next slide, would be a five point question. Okay, in this case, the student will have to choose an option and justify the choice that they made, but in a different type of table. So you still have the option selected by the adult and you still have to, you know, the bright pink is still there uh, pointing to what you need to, to put into your answer sheet. Okay, and in this case, 
It's still an option that the adult must do based on the document file that they had in front of them. So based on the needs and financial situation, which option is best for Pierre-Luc? Justify your answer. In this type of table, a little bit less points, but a little less to include, you must indicate which option is best suited to Pierre-Luc's need and financial situation. And again, we have put in uh, possible answers in there. Indicate two advantages of the choice and indicate one disadvantage for each of the two rejected options. So this is a different format, a different way of asking the question, a different way of validating whether or not the student uh, is competent in the justification of their choice and if they have made the right one, obviously. And of course, it's the same, same uh, question. Therefore, this is the same answer, B, and you have in the boxes uh, information to, to help you see what the possible answers are, what you could, uh, what you could uh, accept as being correct, correctly justified. Now, of course, in this example, there may be a few, uh, a few little things that you may uh, consider. Uh, you have to be careful that the disadvantages are not the same uh, in the both both rejected options. So if it is the case, you have to make sure that it is that it does not uh, appear in the document file. So we're good for this one. That's the second longer answer question sample. We're going to move on to the next if there are no questions. In this case, the the option is provided to the adult. So you will see that the answer is given. In this case, the student must justify the option stated in the question. So the question again, boxed in pink, Pierre-Luc has chosen option B, justify his choice. And now in the chart, you will indicate the one advantage of the choice based on his needs and financial situation. You will indicate two disadvantages of option A, and two disadvantages for, op for option C. Now they are specifically provided and so they are given to them and they have to work around them. That's another type of question. Again, longer answer, more developed answer and there are possible answers in there for you to look at. There's a question. Oh, yes. Go ahead. I'll just talk, it's faster. Could you tell us the difference? Because I see there's different point systems. So the first example that you showed us, there's 10 points and the subsequent um, two are worth five points. Could you just um, go over again what the difference would be in student, um, not, not necessarily student answers, but like why is this one worth 10 points and the other two are worth five points? Okay, uh, my, my best answer for you, and of course we will keep that question down for uh, our ministry, um, our ministry um, representatives in case I do not give you uh, exactly what they have in mind. In case of the first developed answer, the choice of the option is uh, the same task as the, uh, the second one, but in this case, you really have to justify the choice considering the elements. So nothing is really given to you. Uh, you really have to look at the whole picture, the scenario, the document one, document two, and then after having done all of that in document two, really take a look at all that's possible for them. Because if you look at the third column, uh, you have to indicate one advantage from one of the rejected options. So you have to consider many more elements in your answer. In, in my understanding, this would, um, this would justify the, uh, the higher amount of points granted for this type of question. Whereas if you look at the next one, uh, although we can see this as you know, an extensive amount of information, uh, if you look at it from just the table standpoint, you'll notice that everything that we propose as possible answers can be replaced by another. So they're not all required 
any of the three would work as if you can see the or at the end of each line. In this case, again, in my understanding of it, from my teacher standpoint, my, uh, my consultant standpoint, this lesser amount of points would be related to the fact that there's less information to include in the question for the justification to be, uh, to be appropriate. Again, uh, if you don't mind, we're going to write that down on our list and Madame Giroir or Mr. Mayotte can maybe add to this uh, at the end of the presentation, if that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I just, I, I um, cause I'm thinking about how it would reflect the rubric um, in terms of grading. Um, cause if it is worth 10 marks, um, it should be reflected in the rubric about, you know, what, what tasks, what additional tasks student needs, uh, student needs to do if the question is worth 10 marks. That's, yeah. I do understand your question and it is indeed a valid point that you're making. So we're going to keep that part for uh, the, uh, the ministry uh, question portion because I, I want them to give you a, a very, a more specific answer from their uh, standpoint. Did you want Thank to add you. something, Vanessa, before we go? I was just going to say I wrote it down. I think it's a very valid question. That Perfect. We yes, it is. Yeah. Absolutely valid question. Thank you very much. Uh, now, the disclaimer in this section is going to be a little different because uh, you are going to see uh, other types of questions. They are uh, short answer questions, but there are only two that have been, not only have they not been validated by a committee of teachers, but there are two of them, the first two ones that were adapted from the French version of the financial education presentation in October. That was done by uh, Madame Giroir, Monsieur Mayotte, Monsieur Mayotte, sorry, and their, um, and their colleague. The third one that you will see is one that was produced especially for the purpose of the English presentation today. So we are the ones that came up with the document file and the question so that we would do some, we would use something that would fit uh, the profile of our uh, age students. That being said, uh, the following pages then will present short answer question samples and a corresponding document file that we put together for the purposes of uh, this section. In the three cases, a situation is presented the learner is then expected to take the context of the question in consideration and select the answer to each question from a document file that is provided for that particular section. And it's important also to remember that all the documents in the document file must be useful. They, there's no discrimination in things being left behind. Everything is useful in uh, the document file and also that it should be printed in a double page spread. And however long uh, in terms of uh, numbers of pages, it's important that the double page spread uh, format is respected for easier reference. So short answer questions in themselves are tasks that allow adults to demonstrate their ability to mobilize their knowledge. So what they have learned through the course of the units or the LESs that you have put together as their teacher, they will use that knowledge, they will mobilize it, and they will show or demonstrate their understanding of them uh, through observable elements. The observable elements are derived from the key features and the manifestations uh, that were given in the, in the table at the beginning of the presentation. It was, I believe, slide 11, uh, where Andy presented the key features and the manifestations or the evidence of the, uh, the competency of taking a position on a financial issue. So the short answer questions should be uh, should be all reflecting the manifestations that are in uh, in the chart right there. More specifically, or more, uh, if you take them in a more, I would say, not as holistic, but more uh, individualized. 
here's a table that you have that shows you that there are 14, if I can see, yes, I see correctly. There are 14 observable elements that are derived from the manifestations that we saw in the, in the earlier slide. And you have to make sure that there is a minimum of one question for each observable element from the table below. So obviously this could be the portion of your uh, evaluation that is the longest in terms of the number of questions and so forth, because you have 14 observable elements uh, that have to appear and that have to be represented by a minimum of one question for each. Now this table is translated from the table that was presented on October 29, 2021. So it's a translation of what was presented that was important to note in case there are any differences or discrepancies later down the line. This is merely the translation of it. So the sample document file that we've put together, uh, we've done our best to make it uh, you know, the most applicable and, and the best possible um, rendition of what it should look like, again, would be on a double page spread. And as you can see, you have document one that is we can that we can um, see on the left hand side. Document one has three options in it. Document two on the right is a text and document three is a set of data given with uh, you know, the use of a, a table or a, a map or anything of the sort. So we have three types of documents that could, again, could appear. They're not necessarily the be all and end all of it, but they could appear. That's why we selected them as uh, possible sample questions. So let's go on to the first short answer question. So as we said earlier, we will present a situation and then the uh, learner will have to perform a task that is related to that situation. So in this case, Vicky was offered a job in her field of study. We will ask the uh, learner to refer to document one and identify the option that would best help Vicky find ways to balance work and the completion of her study. This would mean that the learner would have to go back to the document file and look at document one, the one that is boxed in uh, aqua right there, read the content of the document. So options A, B, and C, whether they are tables, uh, you know, text, they could even be just images uh, as we sometimes see in our history, uh, history document file, same thing. And after having read, and considered, then the student would be choosing the answer accordingly. In this case, the answer is B, okay, because the one uh, that's the one that gives examples of how to balance, how to do, uh, how to balance the two, and how to be able to what to do this well, and not lose too much steam and energy uh, in the meantime. And then you have the, the rubric on how to evaluate whether or not the student is granted a point for this one or not. If we go to the next question, that's another type of short answer question. In this case, the situation is we're, we're bringing, bringing Vicky back, but we're talking about a Rebecca, which is one of her co-owners, and she's been working there for eight years. She just came back from her second maternity leave and would like to get her degree to have access to a better paying position. With a 13 month old and another child in elementary school, she cannot imagine going back to school full time. In this case, according to document two, what could Rebecca do to see whether she can obtain her degree without returning to school? Before we move on, this particular question was uh, we, we enhanced it a little bit when we put it together. Uh, we decided to add information around it to make it uh, a little bit more uh, along the lines of what a uh, adult education uh, learner 
could be facing. So it is a little bit enhanced from the one that we, uh, that we adapted. So if we move to the next slide, then we are asked to go to document two. Going to document two in this case is the uh, pink box. And as you can see in there, it is a text on recognition of acquired competencies. Now, of course, we made it very obvious for the purpose of this document file. Uh, it may not be the, fir the first four words of the actual document that are, uh, that are the answer to your question. But in this case, this is what it is. The student should read this and understand that Rebecca, the student in question in the, the uh, situation, can apply for a recognition of acquired competencies. And then if that is identified as the answer, then the adult would have uh, been granted one point and or zero if incorrectly identified or not identified at all. So in this case, the short answer question pertains to one document it, it, that contains only one text. There's no option, but there's information to go and look for in the text. If we go to the next question, we have another type of short answer question. This is the one that we created along with the document file uh, to try and find a, um, something that would fit uh, a few of us, of student, a few of our students in uh, in adult education. So in this case, we came up with Simon considering going back to school to upgrade his skills and become an auto mechanic. After looking for a center that offers a program, he he knows he would have to pay for registration and workforce, or he figured that. Now he needs to do more specific research about the financial aspects of his project before going ahead with registration. So again, informed choice, critical thinking, analysis and justification of the choices that are made. We're always going back to this, uh, to this competency to, uh, to, to, look, to look at an issue, but also through the criterion of a, a, an appropriate justification. So in this case, we want two answers and they refer to document three. So in document three, they would have to identify two factors that could impact the cost of Simon's education. We apologize for the faintness of the text, but as you can see in the green boxed document uh, on, on the screen, you have information data. Uh, the sources are there for you to look, to look at. So in here, we have dates, we have, you know, when the classes are taken, how many days, how many weeks, and so on. So lots of data, but we're also focusing on financial aspect. So in this data right here, in the first box, we're really looking at an amount of money. And the amount of money is 892, and if I'm not mistaken, 98 cents, which includes material. So that's pretty much the cost of applying to uh, the auto mechanic program. And below you can see a map of the area. In this case, we used uh, our, uh, we used our friend at uh, New Frontier School Board and um, used Nova Center, which is illustrated here with, of course, information around. So what we're looking for in the next slide in our two possible uh, factors that could impact the cost of his education is, of course, the tuition fee of $892 and some cents and the cost of transportation to and from the center, whether they are going by car, by public transit, and so on and so forth. In this case, we're looking for two answers. So if the student correctly identifies the two elements, two points, one for one out of two, and zero, unfortunately, in the case of uh, none. So as we were saying earlier, these are possible ways of presenting the short answer questions and the long answer questions, but they are not necessarily the only ones. Uh, since you have 14 different uh, observable elements in the short answer question section, then obviously uh, you may come up with uh, other types, always keeping in mind the four roles of the uh, documents that were presented earlier in the case of short answer questions. So 
where we really need to make sure that uh, things are clear is the proficient knowledge. Now, this is the same element, the, the same information as you would found, find in the uh, history presentation that you had if you did uh, take that one in back in December, because proficient knowledge in both cases uh, must be evaluated in a, as part of the, the process of justification or explanation and not as an element in itself. Um, if we go back to uh, slide 18 in the first part uh, of the presentation, this one right there, yeah, I thought it was 18, but it's 25. So there, that's my mistake. Uh, Andy had presented the specifics, right, of the knowledge of budget planning, for example. Now, of course, in the, in the context of your course and of the learning situation that you use, you are going to have to show how, for example, to get to the net monthly income. And that would be by means of comparing gross income to, and what is removed and whatever is, happens to it. So the calculations that pertain to finding the net monthly income or the difference between fixed and variable monthly expenses. So uh, vocabulary and, and specific notions, calculations that may apply, they are all important in the understanding of how to get there. But in the evaluation portion of uh, the program, we are not evaluating the calculations. We are not evaluating whether or not they, they know the definition of fixed versus variable. So this is why in the bullets here, we have mentioned that there are no tasks that are related solely to knowledge proficiency in the end of course evaluation. Now, of course, as you go over the, the, the subject matter and the notions, you may want to assess whether or not they know, uh, the learners know what you have uh, taught them to do. But this would only assess declarative knowledge. And that's not what we are looking for as ter in terms of evaluating uh, financial education at this level. And therefore, the learner cannot simply use their skills like that. They have to use what they know, the constructed knowledge that they have acquired and amassed over the course of your course or their life or whatever uh, was taught to them prior to. And they will call upon that constructed knowledge to be able to articulate their answer and to justify it to the best of their ability. Therefore, the evaluation criteria on appropriate justification of choice really allows and requires the evaluation of the adult's ability to mobilize knowledge not whether or not they can tell you how to calculate net from gross, but rather get the information, use it in the justification of what a choice that they would make, having understood what it is, the difference that is between the two or how the calculation is done, but not the calculation itself in the exam. That is why we say that the adult will have hopefully the ability to mobilize that knowledge, but not use it, we can't use it for the, uh, the evaluation purposes solely. It has to be in context, if you will. So we're just gonna go over quickly everything that we just said in a very um, organic way this time. So it's not very sequential this time. So you remember we said many times that we only have one competency for the financial education course, which is to take a position on a financial issue. So in order to do that, the adult has to refer to sources or use sources like in document files. And we really want it to be real life based sources as much as we can. And we have our four key features uh, of, the of the competency, sorry, that uh, we need to use. So to assess the situation, to examine the different options, to put, to put our position into perspective or to consider legal aspects. So we saw that legal aspects, it's very broad. You know, it can be uh, employment, uh, it can be like loans. So it's like very broad. Um, 
And then in order to do that, or the adult learner needs to use the three um, components, which are the three financial issues, the knowledge related to, to these financial issues, and finally, the relevant concepts that Andy presented at the beginning. Uh, as a teacher, that's gonna be a very <laughs> quick overview of what Julie just said, but she just finished. We need to use only one criterion, we just said that, which is the appropriate justification of choice. So this is how we know if our student is competent or not in taking a position on a financial issue. So that is a very quick overview of what we just said. Uh, in case questions arise, no, we're good for now. So if you do not have any questions, I'm gonna let Julie present to you the forthcoming Grey d'Analyse Didactique. Yes, if you're like me, the diagram, although dynamic and wonderfully put together, uh, was, wow, very, very hard to, I mean, give me only that and I'm stuck. I need the sequential, but, for, uh, for you that are more uh, visual learners, I'm sure this was great. And it was a perfect tool for much of the people that were present uh, in October. So we wanted to make sure that it was as dynamic as it had been when we uh, were presented with it. Now, La Grille d'Analyse Didactique is, uh, it's, well, among the number of instructional tools that are available to educators, La Grille d'Analyse Didactique was especially designed in order to assist in the choice of material used in the financial education program. Now, of course, hopefully you don't have to go through every single thing that you want to uh, put into your teaching of financial education. Hopefully you have something, a leg to stand on that is valid and that is approved material, but anything you wanted to bring in to supplement or complement this is an extraordinary tool uh, to be able to validate whether or not it does fit everything that we have covered in this presentation. The tool itself is under uh, construction currently. It's almost finished. We're putting finishing touches to it, uh, to the English version of it. Uh, and we will present it next Tuesday uh, at our financial education après cours that is scheduled for the 18th from four to five. That will be the main, uh, the main subject that we will touch upon, but we will also keep uh, room for a uh, fo follow-up on today's presentation, uh, maybe uh, leftover questions or things that pop up over the weekend uh, as, you, uh, as you let the dust settle. The link to join the après cours will be the one that you have there. There will be the big red button that you will just press when you get there and you will enter the room and we will uh, make sure to uh, explain. And this is the takeaway that you will take with you as, um, as the tool that is provided. And that is something that is very extensive. It's very well put together. So we wanna make sure that the translation is done to a T. Uh, before we move on to uh, the questions for the ministry representatives, uh, I am just going to remind you that we will uh, we will translate the questions for you. So no problem if you don't uh, if you're not comfortable asking them in French. We will make sure to uh, to uh, translate, and we will also translate the answer for the benefit of everybody. Again, uh, Vanessa, Andy, and myself are available for anything that you need as far as implementation of the program working on uh, evaluation or maybe changing things up or, or adapting uh, current material, that's the mandate of Likip Shuk. So do not hesitate to contact us for any help. Uh, it will be our pleasure to help you. Please do not hesitate. If it is within our mandate, we will gladly do it. If it's within our, uh, our uh, realm of possibilities, we will. And if not, we will help in redirecting you to the proper uh, the proper networks are the proper people that can help you out. So thank you very, very, very much for attending this afternoon. 